Hello, my name is Ricardo Galvan and I am a technical leader with the Cisco Tech UCS team. In this video, I describe how to configure UCS CM6 series standalone server with 100 gigabit connections and Cisco ACI. For this demonstration, I will use the next setup. UCS C245 M6 server with big 1477 card. Nexus 9K C9321 6TC FX2. A connection from big port 0 using QSFP 100G CU3M to Nexus port 101. A connection from big port 1 using QSFP 100G AOC 5M to Nexus port 102. In this demonstration, I show the configuration for two types of the most common QSFPs, active and passive. The first used transceiver is the Cisco's QSFP 100G CUM. This is a QSFP to QSFP direct attached transceiver. This cable is suffering different length from 1 to 5 meters. The second transceiver used for this demonstration is a QSFP 100G AOCM known as well as the active optical cable. This is an active transceiver suitable for short distances. Its cables are much thinner and lighter than Cooper cables. Cisco currently offers this cable in different lengths from 1 to 30 meters. What is the difference between both transceivers? Well, the passive Trinax cable is a direct attached cable or DAC and contains no active components to boost the signal. It is suitable for very short distances up to 5 meters and provide a good solution at a great cost. When the distance exceeds 5 meters, it is recommended that you use AFI cables to ensure signals are transmitted all the way through. The main differences between active and passive direct attached cables is that active cables make use of electronics for signal conditioning while the passive DAC does not. In today's networks, where high speeds rule the market, with ports that run at 25, 40, 100, and nowadays up to 400 Gbps, optical transmission is vulnerable to various sources of signal degradation, such as chromatic and model dispersion and other types of noises. This problem is exacerbated at higher speeds, because receiver filter randwidths must be widened to allow faster signals, and must also then allow more noise energy to pass through. Forward error correction, or FEC, can help to compensate for this problem. Different speeds and type of cable require different FEC configuration. Please refer to the spec sheet and data sheets for further details according to your SFP or QSSP. I have added a reference link to a data sheet in the description of this video. In UCS, typically you'll see the available FEC options once the transceiver is detected. Please note in this case that QSFP 100 GCU and 100 GIG AOC require at minimum they have configured RSFEC with IEEE class 91. To configure these ports, log into your Cisco UCS CAMC. Go to Networking. Select the BIC adapter to use. Then go to External Internet Interfaces tab. Typically, the admin FEC mode is set once the connector is present. However, if it is not present, you can configure it manually in the admin FEC mode setting dropdown. Note that both connectors are displayed as present. This is important because if there is no connector present, you need to ensure that the SFP or the QSFP is well seated. Please note that one of the ports does not come up despite of being correctly configured, while the other port came up directly after being configured. Configuration can be confirmed in UCS CLI by using the adapter commands. For this, use scope chassis. Do show adapter to obtain the PCIe slot name you will use later in the scope adapter command. Scope adapter MLOM in this case. Finally, use the show ext slash 
ETH slash IF command to observe configurations and status. Thanks for watching this video.